April 2016, NASA's pioneering New Horizons probe reaches the Kuiper Belt, a dark, distant region of space at the edge of our solar system. As the New Horizons probe moves beyond its first target, Pluto, its sensors capture a large object on a mysterious trajectory. Scientists give it an ominous name, Arawan. Arawan is named after the Celtic god of death, war, terror, revenge. Not a pleasant person, as you can well imagine. Whatever Arwan is, it's behaving strangely. It seems illuminated, but then it goes dark. It lights up and darkens in a precise rhythm. Scientists realize that this object is rotating. If it's spinning once every five and a half hours, that means the front edge is like 50 miles an hour. So that's like something the size of the state of Delaware completing a full spin in about a quarter of a day. Scientists expect the Kuiper Belt to be filled with objects made of rock and ice. But Arwan's spin suggests it is made of something else. Arwan is spinning so fast that the centrifugal force could actually tear it apart. Is it made of something stronger than rock and ice? New Horizons moves in so its sensors can get a closer look. Whatever Arwan is, we're about to find out. But at the crucial moment, the probe circuits suddenly, inexplicably, go dead. All of a sudden, transmission was cut off. This suggests that someone is monitoring our very presence. When you're a mission operator, it's really one of the last things that you want to see. You're very concerned that there could be something seriously wrong with your spacecraft, and it's jeopardizing the mission. It does beg the question, is someone or something trying to jam NASA's signal? Before contact is lost, scientists see that Arwan is spinning in a manner consistent with a large spaceship. It's spinning as fast as it is, as though it's creating artificial gravity. Spinning creates an artificial gravity environment within the hollow center of the object, like an inverted planet, with the surface on the inside rather than the outside. NASA recognizes that long-haul space travel will only be possible if we can somehow replicate gravity. This is not only good to keep you healthy because our body's used to gravity, but also it's just much easier to get things done than if you're not floating around the room. Analysts compare the mystery object called R1 with NASA's attempts at recreating gravity in space. These two were based on the concept of a spinning ship. Engineers, scientists looked at concepts for artificial gravity, gigantic structures in space, spinning around, where on the outer edges you had forests, you had cities, um, you had places where people could live. In the 1960s, NASA begins ground-based experiments on artificial gravity, building a huge research facility at Langley. Its centerpiece is a space station scale spinning rig designed for human guinea pigs. They would suspend a test subject sideways, spin the wheel, it's about 40 foot in diameter, have them stand on the inner parts there, and as it went nine revolutions a minute was about half of Earth's gravity. That must have been the weirdest experience. It's like a fairground ride on steroids. I would never get on this thing. Neither NASA nor any other space agency is anywhere near building a spinning spacecraft on the scale of R1. What's more, Whatever kind of creature might be inside R1, it's unlikely that they're anything like us. Neuropsychologist Dr. Jana Kaplan from Brandeis University has been studying the effects of artificial gravity on humans. So the room is stationary. We're just about to start spinning. Alberto, you can start. OK, Jana, we are uh, starting up, going up to speed. So the room will accelerate to 10 RPM which is one complete revolution every six seconds. Kaplan's work has highlighted the immense difficulties of creating and surviving artificial gravity. Even walking is hard. When you make a step, your leg is a subject to Coriolis force deviation. 
The Coriolis force is a bizarre effect that only happens in rotating environments. It causes straight line motions to bend. And it's not the only problem humans would face in a spinning craft. We experience motion sickness. There's confusion. The person is, for all practical purposes, dysfunctional. I would estimate we maybe have 10 more minutes. I feel um, kind of a cold sweat. I can see the progression of the symptoms. The sweat is now over my whole body. There's a fine line between how much spinning the human body can tolerate. You start spinning too fast, you're gonna start blowing chunks. In space, that can be disastrous. It'll spread around and contaminate the air that you breathe and can cause short circuits in your electronics. It can be extremely dangerous. Humans are some way off mastering artificial gravity. And indeed, although R1's 50 mile an hour surface spin is fast enough to create gravity, it's not enough gravity for human passengers. If R1 is some kind of craft, it's manned by beings who are nothing like us. The question is, what are they doing there? If Iran is a spacecraft, why is it spinning so slowly? It could be that what is living on it is not human-like. Could it be that what's on it is not a creature that needs artificial gravity the way that we do? Alien beings able to operate in a gravity environment as low as this would look very different to us. It will be a very different body, more like a blob with some tentacles. So you could have something like your vital organs, the brain, everything's kind of centrally located, and then just squid tentacles, like a, almost like a sea urchin. And there's good reason for the Arwenites to skulk in the Kuiper Belt, far from the nearest planet. Given that there are trillions of objects out there in the Kuiper Belt, and they're too far away and too dark for us to really see, if you were an alien that wanted to set up an observation post to study these funky creatures called humans on Earth, that'd be a pretty good place to set it up. If you're a zero-gravity life form, you want to skirt very cautiously around the planetary zone. Suddenly, places like Earth have become a danger zone, a, a veritable black hole. If they tried to walk around on Earth's surface, they would just get mushed. It would not be a good place for them. As the New Horizons probe moves away from R1, it spookily flickers back to life. Whatever happened to New Horizons computers, it prevented NASA from finding out the truth about the intriguing spinning object. The origin and nature of R1 remains a mystery. We don't have any new missions planned to Kuiper Belt at this time. It could be that we are in the dark on what Iran is for a very long time. 